how can you set and keep your best health goals? That's the question we're going to be addressing today on Flourishment. I'm your host, Tina Yeager. Flourishment is sponsored by Access More. Today, I have with me an amazing guest. Her name is Wendy Pett. She's a naturopathic doctor, author, speaker, and TV host. She uses whole food, plant-based wellness coaching, emotional healing, personal online training, fitness planning, educational and motivational speaking, and she creates new products and tools to assist clients during her teaching of balanced mind, body, and spirit through her Visibly Fit Wellness Program. And she is here to talk to us today about how to set and keep your best health goals. Welcome, Wendy. I am so honored to have you on Flourishment today. Thank you so much, Tina. It is just fantastic to be here. It's an honor and a privilege. So how specific do you need to be when you're setting the best goals that you can set for your health? You need to be very specific. Um, a lot of times people will just say, you know, it, it's usually with me, it's like, I want to lose 50 pounds. I want to lose, you know, 30 pounds. And I'm like, okay, we, we need to be specific. First of all, I, I teach them uh, to say, let's talk about releasing weight because I talk about releasing the unhealthy emotions that are attached to the unhealthy weight. And there's a big correlation with that. So we uh, talk a lot through that in my visibly fit coaching program. Um, but we talk about the specifics of how are you going to get there? Like, are you going to um, bring in uh, walking? Are we going to start bringing that in, you know, you know, on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, are we going to bring in the visibly fit exercises? I mean, this is what I do in the visibly fit program, but you know, for everyone, it's different um, with how they're eating. We, we talk about how, how are you prepping for success each week? Because if we haven't prepped, then you usually are falling short. So that has to be very specifically done as well, but those goals have to be broken down so much so that they feel, uh, just like you can, you can, taste them, you can touch them because they just need to be an easy action step because it's broken down that much. It's so specific that you don't have to think about it too much. You just do it. And it feels like, okay, okay, I got this. Okay. This is just that one step at today. I'm going for a, a, you know, a walk. Maybe it's a walk around the block for you. Maybe it's, you know, a five mile walk, whatever it is for you, that's on your list today. And then tomorrow on Tuesday, for instance, you've got that next thing, but it's already scheduled and it's already broken down. And that's how you will get to the goal at the end of the month per se. Does that make sense? It does. So you want to be very specific, yeah. very measurable, measurable, very short term as far as what is your next step in some regards. Exactly. But then also, do you want people to start setting only goals that they can maintain for the rest of their lives. What would you say about yeah. setting those maintainable goals? Yeah, no, it's so important to have the lifestyle maintainable goals, but it's also important to have those grandiose um, things that are going to stretch you a little bit. Like I'm going to run a marathon in 2023 or whatever it is so that you can uh, work towards that, that big, big goal that you've never done before, right? You got to challenge yourself a little bit, but the lifestyle kind of goals really become um, a goal that you, you kind of, you set it, you keep it. It's, it's like, becomes like brushing your teeth and combing your hair. It becomes like no big deal at that point. Uh, once you've hit it, because you're in such a stride that it doesn't seem like, oh, that's a goal. You've already accomplished that goal because it's now just part of your lifestyle. Um, and I think that's the mindset shift that people need to have is, oh, this is just who I am, what I do, how I operate, not, oh, I've got this goal that I need to, to continually try to, to, to get because they're not accomplishing it. I love the way that you, Wendy, connect the emotions that are behind people's health choices to making better choices about their physical well-being and better habits that they can maintain because it's really all connected. Spirituality, mental health, and physical wellness are all interconnected and related to each other. So when you're talking about someone setting lifestyle goals or long-term goals, how do you help them disconnect the emotion from the habit? Because that can be the big piece. People are eating to fill an emptiness. People are tuning out instead of doing their exercises because it's easier than 
having to be some place where they can be alert and focused and thinking straight because it hurts to think it hurts to let their mind be able to be focused enough to go into trauma or emotional issues so how do you help people disconnect those things when you're talking about that yeah i think um instead of you know, originally you know disconnecting it we actually want to actually address it a lot of people don't realize there's so much emotional uh, baggage if you will attached to their actions or lack thereof and so once we start to uh, just kind of unravel that and 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 really talk that through it's it's eye-opening and there's come kind of like this aha moment where they're like oh my goodness i didn't realize that i was you know watching netflix because i was in denial or i you know all all the different things or i was just in a depressed state because I'm actually really angry about this. And, and we just start to un unravel those, that emotional, like you said, web and, and, and pinpoint why and where it actually originated. And maybe the false uh, belief system, the lies that were told to them and to really um, attack things with, um, I, I call it the F word, uh, really go with the F word. And it's all about forgiveness. It's forgiving others. It's forgiving yourself. It's really putting yourself into a place of, of, of that love and compassion and, and, and forgiveness. And, and it helps you operate in a different way when you are coming from that place, instead of a place of shame and guilt and condemnation and, and uh, you know, anger and, and all the things that, that go with that. And so, you know, once we understand that, we start to kind of unpack it, unravel it a little bit. It doesn't mean it necessarily goes away, but we have some exercises that we do, literal and, um, you know, emotional exercise um, things that we go through that help them just kind of journal through it and, and, and release it. And when I talk about, you know, releasing those unhealthy emotions to release the unhealthy weight, it's a big, big component. And I had one client and she was just at a, just like a, a stagnant weight for about three weeks and she had this this anger issue she had something that was done to her early on in her life and she went through an exercise that we did and and she wrote a letter basically forgiving this person and you know she didn't send it to the person but she wrote out all of her emotions all her feelings wrote it all out on paper and then she burnt the letter actually she didn't mail it to the person but just doing that exercise she released um five or six pounds that week and she was like at a plateau and so it really does make a difference when we can breathe through things and and just really let it go you know um <laughs> the the cute little uh movie uh cartoon frozen she does it well right let it go she sings it well we all just need to learn to let it go so much more instead of hanging on because our the, our cells are hanging on to those toxic emotions and it's keeping unhealthy um toxins and and hang on to unhealthy fat uh at the cellular level and so when we start to attack it on an emotional standpoint it really does start to shake loose those to toxins in our cells and we operate in a different way and we start to do things in a in a loving way like instead of i have to it's an i get to it's like wow okay this this body is is a gift and it houses the Holy Spirit. And so, wow, I get to go for a walk today. I don't have to. And, it, and it's part of that mindset shift too, right? But um, it's amazing when there's that kind of aha moment of, of shift. And I, and I can see the lights go on with my clients. It's pretty awesome. Such a power in the words that we speak over ourselves and our yes. circumstances and what we allow to define us and to define our choices. If we say, I am a person who seeks help, I am a person who puts my best health as my priority. If you define yourself according to good habits, then yes. you will follow through on how you identify yourself and that will stick and stay long-term. And the same holds true for how you define your bad habits. Sometimes we have this problem with defining our bad habits as indulgences instead of sabotage. And that can be an issue too. So making sure that you define good things as a reward, getting to go on a walk as a reward, but right. defining things that we do to ourselves that are not good, like 
not going to bed on time. That is sabotaging behavior. So those things that we choose to say about what we do and who we are make a huge difference on where we go. Absolutely. Yep. Words are powerful. I love that you have been on the show today, Wendy, and I so appreciate your wisdom and insight. And I know that people will be dying, not dying because they're going to be living <laughs> um, to get on your visibly fit program. So tell us where we can find you and see your show and maybe sign up to be part of your coaching and wellness program. Yes, you can find me at wendypet.com and that's w e n d i e p e t t.com and um and I you I also have a podcast called Visibly Fit and you can uh, tune in and listen there or I've got my YouTube channel. Um you know what? I'm on just about every platform you can be on so i'm sure wherever you are i am there as well so um come look for me i love to interact with with people so send me a message and uh if you're looking for some help i'd love to help you thank you wendy and thank, thank you. you for listening i know that you have greatly enjoyed this conversation with wendy pet i hope that you will connect with her and of course i also hope that you come back for the next episode of flourishment mm -hmm.